So this is a session on the normal distribution, which I alluded to last time when we discussed the z-scores. Um, next time I'm going to actually hook the normal distribution to the z-score to actually the binomial distribution. So we're going to pull all of it together. So let me introduce the normal distribution. Um, normal distribution has prerequisites, just like the binomial distribution. Uh, we are not going to address those uh, conditions uh, at this point for a good reason. Uh, we're going to assume whatever I give you follows a normal distribution. So here is a situation. The one thing to remember about uh, phenomena that follow a normal distribution, if they tend to be uh, natural, uh, uh, as I mentioned the other day, you know, uh, people's heights, people's weights, um, IQ scores, SAT scores, uh, ACT scores, um, that's kind of a thing. And normal distribution um, uh, look like uh, a bell-shaped curve like this. So there is a concentration in the middle, and as you move to the right or to the left, the percentage um, uh, shrinks, um, as you will see in a few examples today. So, so I'm going to lo look at the IQ scores. IQ score is a score that measures people's intelligence. And um, so the let's just assume that the scores follow a normal distribution. I said follow an approximately normal distribution. I would have to give you the mean, the mean of the entire population. Uh, this is not a sample that we're taking like 100 people and looking at their IQ scores. We, we're we looking at the I I, IQ scores of all the people uh, in that live um, uh, that live in the U.S. So the, the mean score is 110, okay? So that goes at the center of the distribution, right? At um, You have more of the 110 than anything else. So a score here... Um, has a lower height, which means this area is very small. So in here, you have the majority. And then as you move to the left, uh, people are less intelligent. And as you move to the right, uh, people seem to be a lot more intelligent. Makes sense? So let's just assume the standard deviation of, is 25. The, the first thing you should always do, always, 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 draw a picture, okay? So basically, you draw uh, a bell-shaped curve. This is IQ. You can call it X. Um, draw a bell-shaped curve and show where the two numbers lie. These are the two things you need. And in fact, the only two things you're going to need to answer any question you care about. If you know that some sort of a random variable follows a normal distribution, you just need what we call parameters, two parameters. One is the mean and the other one of the population, and one is the standard deviation. And if you may, re you may remember what standard deviation stands for visually on a normal distribution. You look for what we call the inflection points. This is concave down. In here, it's concave up. Somewhere in here, we change concavity. That distance from the mean 110, 110 is right in the dead center, where you have the peak, right? From here all the way to the point of inflection, that's about 25, okay? So I draw a picture here for you, just so I can illustrate. So here is 110, here is 25. So you take this distance and you add it, right? So 110 plus 25 is 135, and you add another 25, you get 160. And if you add a third, uh, three standard deviations, you'll end up with um, 185. Make sense? And conversely, start with 110. If you take that distance and drop it by 25, you get 85, right? So one standard deviation to the left will land you at 85. And if you take another 25, you'll come down to 60. And if you want to be three standard deviations away from the bottom, uh, that would be... Uh, 35, right? So 35. So um, a score 
of 160 on an IQ score is two standard deviations away from the mean, from the average. So these are really bright people, so to speak, okay? The same thing happens here. Now, if you, you can also do the standard deviation uh, by looking at this inflection points to the middle, and that should drop you to 85 and take that distance and duplicate it over and over and over. So one standard deviation to the right, one standard deviation to the left. Two standard deviations to the right, two standard deviations to the left. Three standard deviations to the right, three standard deviations to the left. Make sense? Okay. So it is always a good idea to draw a picture, show where your mean is, show where your standard deviation is, and put and label your axis. Don't worry about 90. 90 is, uh, 90 is, re, uh, is referring to the question, okay? So that's all you need to do. Put 110, put 25, bell-shaped curve, and label your x-axis. Okay. So here is a typical question. And there are many ways to solve this problem. I'm only going to show you the graphical method. There are other ways to do this, okay? What percent? So let me, let me pause here. Let's go back here. Um, we always ask you one of two questions. We give you a location, let's say a score of 135, right? If somebody scores 135, what percentile would that be? What I'm asking here is this area. This entire area is 100%, okay? So if I say, what percent is somebody that has an IQ of 135? It just means we're looking for this area here. If I say what percent of the people have an ice score of 60 or less, it just means this area. So if I tell you a particular IQ score or location, let's call it location, you will produce the area. And that would be the chance or the percent or the probability. Conversely, I might give you a percent. I might say, I may, I might say, um, who's in the fiftieth percentile? Fiftieth percentile means this area is fifty, and you know that that number has to be one ten, because fifty percent is to the left of 110 and 50% is to the right of 110. So I might give you a location and you produce the area or the probability or the percents. I might give you an area and you produce the location, the IQ score. It's always one or the other, okay? So let's go here. What percent, I'm looking for an area, what percent of people have a scores, have scores, above 90. So I just drew a little, uh, I put where 90 is. Now 110, if you take away 25, it takes me here, right? So I would say 90 is somewhere in here. And what I'm asking you for is this area shaded in blue. That's what I'm looking for. Isn't that the question? Somebody with a 90 score or above, here or here or here or here, what percent? I'm asking for this area. So if I give you a particular location and I'm asking for the area, you have to invoke a function called normal uh, norm CDF, normal cumulative density function or norm CDF, norm CDF. How do you do it? First of all, how do you find it? It's easy. You go to second vars, which is distribution, and instead of scrolling down to binom PDF, binom CDF, you just go scroll down to number two, and you will see the word norm CDF. Norm CDF is going to pop up on your menu, on your, on your uh, screen, and you need to enter some numbers. One is the interval. The interval. And then the mean, mu, and then the standard deviation, sigma. Sigma, sigma is the standard deviation, has this abbreviation, sigma. That means the standard deviation, okay? So, it's very easy. 
you have four numbers in, in my case, four numbers. There is an interval, and then there is a mean and sigma. So the mean is easy, and sigma is easy. I, I gave them to you. What is the interval? I want to be more than 90. So your interval starts at 90, right? Doesn't it start at 90? Starts at 90 and goes to infinity, right? Like Because I, I just said above 90, above 90. So I don't know what it's going to stop, 200, 300, I have no idea. The way you write this interval, you just write 90, which is the lower limits, the, the left-hand side, 90. And then we don't have an abbreviation for infinity. Just write like a million. You could literally write a million. Something like this, or like 10 million. I like to, I don't like to write too many zeros. I just write 10 to the 8, which is like 100 million, right? Just pick a huge number. You're going from 90 to some huge number. I choose, I choose, I like to write 10 to the 8, which is basically 100 million. Make sense? So it doesn't matter. You don't have to put 100 million. You could just put a million or even a thousand. I think a thousand will do the job or, or 10,000 or something. So that's how you write your interval from 90 to so-called infinity, like a giant number and put the mu and sigma and press enter and you're going to get a percentage. So basically 78.81% of the population has an IQ score of 90 or above. It should make sense to you. Now, if I had said 110 or above, you know you're going to get 50% because 110 is the mean. So this area to the right of 110 is exactly 50%. So I knew my answer is going to be more than 50% because 90 is a little to the left of the mean. So there is that extra area here, right? So this is 50%. And then there is a little bit here between 90 and 110. That's accounted for about 28.81%. In any case, you should expect a number of more than 50%. I got 78.81. So what does norm CDF do? It takes numbers, location, location, I call it location, and it produces an area. I'll do another one similar. What percent? I'm looking for an area again. So that means we're going to use norm CDF again. What percent of people have scored less than 100? So if this is 110, this is 100, I am looking for this area. Makes sense? I better get a number less than 50% because any area to the left of 110 has to be 50% because the mean is 110. And the median is 110, by the way, just so you know. This is so symmetric. The mean and the median are both 110. So what does a median mean? The median is like, the, like when you're driving, they call the yellow line that split the road between you going in one direction and the other car coming from the other direction. It's called the median, right? It splits the road in 50%, in, in half, so to speak. So this is the mean. I gave you the mean. But I just want you to know that that mean is also the median, which means 50% is on the right of 110 and 50% is on the left of 110. Since 100 is a little further to the left of 110, uh, this is 50%. So this has to be less than 50%. I got 34.46%. How, how, how do I do it? The first thing I do, by the way, I always write the question. The probability that X is more than 90. This in blue is basically rewriting all of this stuff in black. What percent of the people have scores above 90? That is the question. And I just showed you how to do it. Norm CDF and then interval mu sigma. What percent of people have scores less than 100? I'm exactly asking this question, am I not? Visually, I'm asking for this shaded area. We know it's going to be less than 50%. You do here again, second VARS distribution, scroll down to number two, norm CDF, and you need to enter the interval, the interval, mean sigma. Those don't change. Now, what is my interval? Let's visualize this. I said less than 100. Well, here is 100. Less than 100. I didn't tell you what it stops. 
So you, so this is like negative infinity. Now we know IQ scores cannot go, cannot go below zero. So you could write zero. I prefer that you don't write zero. Just write a giant negative number. Let's say negative 100 million. And that is why I wrote negative 10 to the eight. Please don't write 100 first because you wanna go from the left to the right. Small to large. Small to large. Right? You, you start at 90 and you go all the way to infinity. You start at negative infinity and you come all the way to 100. Small and then large. The small number I wrote negative 10 to the 8. Feel free to write negative 1,000 or negative 10,000 or even 0. But I would, I, would, I would refrain from 0. We know, see the TI is dumb. It doesn't know that you are referring to IQ. We know IQ scores have to be more zero or more. In fact, actually, I think the lowest is like uh, I don't know thirty or something. But 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 the but the TI is dumb. So just write a, a giant small number, all the way to hundred. That's your interval. Interval, mu sigma. I got approximately thirty four point four six percent. Makes sense because fifty percent is this from here, all the way. And since 100 is to the left of 110, um, I'm going to lose this much, right? So it's going to be less than 50%. By, by how much? By this, by about 16%. So I got 34.46, okay? Double check these on your TI to see how to do this. All right, now I'm going to switch it on you. Now I'm going to give you an area, like a shaded region. I'm going to tell you to give me the location, location, okay? Okay. And in that case, you don't do norm CDF. Norm CDF, let me write this here. Norm CDF, norm CDF, it is a function. It is literally a function. Let me write it here. Norm CDF. It's just a function. Let's, let's, let's call it f of x, right? It's just a function. What does it do? What does it do? It takes a location and it produces a percentage or a probability or area. Does that make sense? That's what this function does. It takes a location and it produces an area. That's what I did here. It took a location. Of course, I have to write my two parameters. It took a location. Norm of the location gave me area. Norm of location gave me area. Well, guess what? If I wanna go backwards and I'll put it in blue, if I have an area and I want to go to a location, I cannot use norm CDF. I have to go backwards. It's called inverse norm. Inverse norm. INV. INV stands for inverse norm. Inverse norm takes an area, a percentile, a percentage, a probability, and produces an IQ score. Make sense? I'm just, so I, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to work backwards. I'm going to give you, let's say, um, what score is in the 16th percentile? So let's say this area is 0.16 up to here, 0.16. I want to know what's that location. I want to know what is that IQ score. That's the question I want to address next. So here it is. In what range? I'm asking for location. I'm asking for location. In what range? Do the middle 60% of all IQ scores lie? Basically, what I'm asking is, if I, if I put, let's say this is 68%, let's say. If this area is 68%, I want to know what's the lowest score to the highest score. Because I said the middle 68%. Does that make sense? The middle 68% means this area in the dead center is 68%. 68%. I want to know what are these two scores. That's the question. So, um, so I drew a picture for you. I drew a normal distribution. I have my IQ score. I have my mean. I have my standard deviation hitting the point of inflection. I am shading some area that I think is about 68%. Uh, I really don't know 
but but I'm just moving a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right. So because the whole thing is 100%. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe this is about 15, 16%, and this is about 15, 16%. So that leaves me with 68%, let's say. I want to know what's this range going from here to here, okay? So of course, I'm going to have to do inverse norm, as I explained here. Inverse norm. How do you find it? You go to second vars distribution, which is distribution, and instead of clicking on number two, which was norm CDF, this time you click on number three. That gives you inverse norm. But now you really need to pay attention. How do you, how do you write the area? The, uh, the area, right? Well, I want 68%. I want this eight. You cannot write point DC. I didn't write point 68. I didn't write point six. This is an area. That's just the mean sigma, mean sigma. In the past, we had interval, mean sigma. Now I have area. I'll write it here. Area, mean sigma. Mean sigma don't change. But notice I didn't write 0.68. Isn't that what I'm supposed to write, 0.68? Because I'm talking about the area of 0.68. I didn't write that down. So pay attention. Here is why I wrote this and that. If you write 0.68, I'll put it in red because this is not what you're supposed to do. If you write 0.68 mu sigma, you know what it's going to do? It's going to give you this area. It always gives you a location where to where the area is 0.68 from from all the way here to wherever you want to stop. It always looks at the left-hand side basically. So I cannot write 0.68. Here's how you do it. If I want to know this location, this location, I call it, uh, actually, let's begin with lower bound. If I want to know this location, I have to write an area to the left of my location. Well, if this is 68%, that leaves me with 32. That means this consumed... 16% and this area here consumed 16% and therefore I wrote 0 0.16 it, if you want to know this location you cannot write 68% you have to write the area to the left of the location you are interested in so I, this is, I call this a lower bound and I call this the upper bound, right? Because I'm looking for an interval from some ISQ score to another ISQ score, right? So you have to write 16%. And that's why I wrote 0.16. You do not write 68%. So 0.16 mean sigma. I got 85.139. Basically, basically, this location here, this 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 IQ is sorry uh, is eighty five point one three nine. That's what it says. It should be below one ten, right? It should be below one ten because I am to the left of one ten. So this is eighty five point one three nine. So let's now find this location because I'm looking for an interval. To find this location, I have to write this area to the left, the whole left. Well, this is 68 and another 16, that gives me 84%. No matter what location you're looking for, no matter if, if, if I'm given a location, if I want to know this location, I, the area you have to write is this entire area to the left of the location. Therefore, I have to write 
0.84. Why? I'm looking for this location. So what area am I supposed to write? I'm supposed to write this entire area right there. Well, we already know the red area is 68, and we already know this is 16, and 16 plus 68 is 84%. That is why I wrote 0.84. And therefore, this is my location. That means, that means, let me erase this 16% here. That means this IQ score here is 134.861. So to answer the question, in what range do the middle 68% of all IQ scores lie? The answer is it lies between 85.139 and 134.861. Makes sense? In fact, if you write this interval here and write mu and sigma, I, I guarantee you, you're going to get 68%. Try it. Write norm CDF. Lower limit, upper limit, which is this number. Write 85. I'll write it here for you, okay? I'll write it here in green. Double check, double check. If you do norm CDF of my interval, my interval is 85. I'm double checking my work, okay? This is not the question. I'm just checking my work. Comma, 134.861 mu. Sigma, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you're going to get 0.68. That's how you double check your work. For example, if a student, if you're asked to solve for X, and you say, oh, yeah, X equals 2, yeah. Well, how do you double check? You just plug in 2, right? And you say, okay, 2 plus 1 is 3. Yeah, it works. That's how you check. So if you care to check if I'm right or wrong, you just put your interval with norm CDF function, this function, Put your interval, mu sigma, and you will get 0.68. If you don't get 0.68, it means we screwed up here. Make sense? All right. So I'm going to conclude. Uh, I'm, I'm basically done. I'm just going to give you homework. But I want to conclude with uh, a little trick that I might, you might find helpful. If you, don't like, if you don't like to write to do both, you have to think of this area and you have to think of that area if you just find one of them let's say you do the lower bound you're looking for this location you wrote 16 percent mean sigma you got this one if you already know your lower end here it is and the middle is 110 obviously how do you get 134 how do i get this answer without doing it very simple you find this distance which is 110 minus 85.139 gave me 24.861 and add it to 110, right? If I add 110 to 24861, I'll do it here. This is 24.861. And therefore, if you add 24.861 to 110, you should get the other answer. Conversely, imagine you started with this. That's all you did. You got that. Okay, here it is. How do you get this without doing this one? Easy. You know the middle is 110. You know this is 134. You look at the difference. You do 134.861 minus 110, you get this number. You say, okay, we've got to subtract it again from 110. If you do 110 minus 24.861, you're going to get this one. In other words, if you know this, you get that for free. And if you know this, you get that for free. Why? Because you're taking advantage of the middle. So if you know this one, you can get this one for free. If you know this one, you can get this one for free. Or actually do both using your calculator. But you have to think about what area to write. In, in either case, in neither case did I write 0.68. I did not write 0.68. I did not write 0.68. Okay? You got to think about that. If this is a little over your head, just go back, you know, rewind. And just, just listen to this presentation I gave you about how to find this location and how to find that location. All right. So I'm going to conclude with an assignment. By the way, you might ask, why do we care? <laughs> why do we even care? Okay, why, why do we do this stuff? I'll tell you why. So imagine, imagine. So bear with me for a second before I share with you this homework. This homework is basically a copy 
of the previous one. I just ch changed the scenario. Okay? Um, let's say you produce helmets. And, and of course, you want your customers to be happy. Well, one way, one way to do that is to measure the diameter or the circumference of people's heads. You know, just go around their head and measure their diameter so you know what everybody's size is. Make sense? The problem with that, of course, is yeah, you will definitely make people happy because they're going to get exactly the helmet size that they need. You know, it's not too big, it's not too small, it's just perfect. Um, in fact, I, I take it back. You're not going to make them happy because even though they're going to be happy with the fitting of the helmets, uh, it might take you three years to get them the helmet. Can you imagine if you measure the circumference um, of people's heads in the U.S. and go through 320 million people? Or maybe it is an army and maybe it's only 300,000 people. Can you imagine if you measure 300,000 uh, circumferences? Uh, it'll take you forever and it'll cost you a lot of money too, by the way, because you have to hire a lot of people to, to do the measurements. You can't just rely on two people. So it is costly, it's time consuming, and therefore, even though you're gonna make people happy in terms of the size fits perfectly, uh, they're gonna get it a year later or two years later, and you're gonna make people upset. So, so here is a trick. Since people's head circumference tends to follow a normal distribution. Why? It is a natural phenomenon. There are some people with small heads and there are some people with big heads and the majority is somewhere in the middle. You can easily test, and I haven't shown you how to test for normality yet. I haven't shown you the conditions, but it's actually much easier than the binomial one. If you know it follows a normal distribution, what you can do is... Um, don't do special order for the majority of them. So I'll take you back here. Uh, I messed up my, my curve, huh? Let me erase this completely. I don't need it. So watch. So, so I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take maybe 90% and just... No special order, no special order whatsoever. And I will only custom make some for the 5% who have big heads and 5% of those with small heads. For example, if I know, if I know that um, the majority of the people, circumference is 24 inches, give or take whatever, standard deviation, I'll just make 90% in bulk. They're all, all of them basically about the same. And then I'll just custom make some for the 5%. And I have to figure out their uh, circumference size, like what's, what's their head size here. It might be 32 inches or something. And I'll custom it for those with small heads. And who knows, it might be, it might be like 18 inches. You know, I'll make few. What's, what, what is that few? 5%. Okay, I can custom make those. I can custom make those. And in here, I don't care. I'll just make... Because, you know, imagine you are in a, a, at a school. And do you think the school takes all the T-shirts measurements? Like, what's your size? What's your size? What's your size? You're like 1,200 people. So what they do is they just order... They don't use this, unfortunately. They just use a little common sense, which is not so common. They would probably order... 80% uh, of just, let's say, medium. And then they'll say, okay, let's just order a few small t-shirts and a few large and a couple of extra large. Because they know the majority fits within a specific criteria called, let's say, medium or large, whatever that is. They don't, unfortunately, they don't, they don't use normal distribution. They use, um, they use the so-called common sense, Okay. So, so here is the situation. That's the reason, by the way, why we care about normal distribution. It, it is cost effective and it's not time consuming and people are going to be happy because they're going to get the 
the size that they need um, by waiting for a couple of days and, and, and you're not going to spend money hiring people to go and measure their, their head circumference. You know, like an army with 300,000 people or a million people is ridiculous. So, head circumference among males is approximately normal. I'm giving it to you for free. You don't have to check any conditions. In fact, you don't know how to check the conditions yet. The mean is 22.8 inches and the standard deviation is 1.1. I'm asking for the probability, which means norm CDF, norm CDF, norm CDF. What percent have head circumference greater than 24 inches? Make sure you draw a picture, okay? Next one. What percent have head circumference between this and that? That's your interval. Your interval here is 24 comma million, let's say. And in here, your interval is 21.7 comma 23.9. I already gave you an interval. Now, I flipped it on you. A head circumference of 25 inches would be what percentile? I'm giving you the location and I'm asking for the percent or the percentile, which means you have to use inverse norm. Norm CDF, norm CDF, inverse norm. All right. Have a wonderful day.